Taking pride in adopting a holistic approach to delivering projects, Plenary Group is an international infrastructure business with large, experienced management teams in the Americas and the Asia-Pacific region. John O'Rourke, principal of Plenary Group, is here to discuss some of their ongoing developments. John, welcome. Thanks, Paul. Let's begin with an overview, if you would, of the PPP markets in Australia, Canada and the US. Well, perhaps start with Australia, which is where Plenary sort of grew up. Uh, it's a very sophisticated, aggressive bidding market for PPPs. It always has, has been uh, on both consortia side and from a government perspective and probably really sort of punches above its weight in terms of competition for a relatively small number of projects that come to the market. Uh, Canada is, uh, has been a fabulous market for, for us. It's, it's got all of the same characteristics of the Australian market around infrastructure and the way infrastructure is procured. I think what they've done particularly well in Canada is the policy commitment to PPPs has been strong and that's led to a very consistent pipeline of projects and, and that's allowed industry to really develop up around it. So you're now seeing the first of the Canadian projects come into operations and seeing some outstanding outcomes, I think, coming from those projects. The US is still prospective. We've followed it for a long time, um, but I think our, my North American colleagues are, uh, are much more optimistic that its time is, is coming. There's some momentum building around some jurisdictions and, and we are keen to selectively pursue opportunities in the US market. You mentioned the similarities between the Australian and Canadian models. What are the differences in the debt and equity project finance markets there and what lessons, if any, can, can they learn from each other? I think probably a key difference that we're seeing is, is around debt and the bond markets. The, the Canadian market recovered very strongly post-GFC and bond markets were quick to, to um, come back to infrastructure space and take advantage of the long duration, senior debt, lower risk opportunities that were available. We haven't seen the bond market uh, come back into PPP in Australia and at the moment there doesn't appear that appetite. So we're reliant on the bank debt market, which is okay, but it's a market that's limited, limited by tenor and therefore there's uh, additional risks for equity in, in refinancing. So. If you said, what's a key, a key lesson? I think it's, well, what are, what are the factors that have led to the bond market being rejuvenated in Canada and can we uh, apply some of those uh, incentives and learnings in Australia and reactivate that market? I think it's very important for the pipeline coming forward. So what challenges do project sponsors face in these markets? We as a project sponsor at Plenary, I think the biggest challenge is just the, the unrelenting commitment that's needed to hard work across these processes. They're, they're, very complex projects, long lead times, uh, lots of different risk issues through a bidding phase, construction and into operations. And, uh, and as a sponsor, I think it's moved way beyond the days of saying we're here to arrange a transaction. Uh, as a sponsor, your, your role is to provide leadership and support to a whole array of consortium partners, but it's to be able to pull all that together and, and deliver to government in a, in a coherent way, a single value for money uh, bid. We invest equity in every project that we that we participate in and therefore uh, it's not just about winning projects it's about making them sustainable making them work in the long term and deliver the uh, investment return so uh, yeah there's a lot of rolling up of the sleeves that's needed to bring all that together let's talk about one of your actual projects then the Victoria Comprehensive Cancer Centre very exciting project very interesting what did the state want from it and how did Plenary Group work to achieve that yeah, it is a very exciting project. I think it, it was born out of the state government saying that uh, Melbourne, the city of Melbourne, you know, has particular strengths in, in health care and, and medical research and how could it, it leverage those into a, into a single cancer facility. And they had a very high aspiration. They set, set a bar of saying they wanted this facility to be ranked in the top ten in the world. You know, that is, that is a high bar in Australian, in Australian terms. So we, we came at that in, in saying, well, we needed a consortium that first and foremost is going to be robust across all of the disciplines. So financially strong, but also technically capable across all of the uh, elements that are required to bring a project like that together. And I think the other the important thing that we did was brought in some, I guess, creative thinking into the consortium, including people that hadn't necessarily been involved in PPPs before, to give the project that spark that sort of met the aspiration of the, uh, of the state. The theme of collaboration was very important for this project. How did that 
influence your approach? Yeah, absolutely. From the government's perspective, it is all about collaboration. They, they are relocating six significant uh, public institutes into one facility. So the task on the consortium side was to say, how are we going to integrate that in a functional, efficient, cost-effective way? Uh, so, so the focus on teamwork around that and then applying that to the government client was really, was really crucial. And then I think you look at the whole and say, uh, again, the aspiration is high. It needed to be a really significant architectural statement. There's a budget. We have to meet the budget and have a finance structure around it. But uh, the building needs to look beautiful. And I think that's what we've achieved. It's a really significant site. And it's a project that I think is going to win a, a lot of awards beyond finance and, uh, and PPP. Where is the project right now? How far down the timeline are you? We have a target completion date at the end of 2016, so we're about a year and a half into construction and so far so good it's all uh, on track and uh, on, on time, on budget. And finally, looking to the future, what, what innovations, what projects do you have to look forward to? Around innovations, I think the, an exciting development has been governments, uh, both in Australia and in our North American markets, looking to see whether the availability model that has been successfully applied in social infrastructure projects like the Cancer Centre can also be applied in the civil space around major transport projects of rail particularly and road. So we're very keen to see whether our skills as a, as a sponsor can be translated into those technically challenging projects but um, very large volume opportunities so we're excited by that. And probably lastly, the, the US, as, as, as I mentioned, uh, our North American colleagues think that uh, you know, the next three to five years is, is, is going to see some real momentum there and we're excited to pursue those. John, thank you very much. Thanks, Paul.